and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode 10 of The Expanse. And this episode is called Cascade, which feels about the point that we're at as we're sort of sliding into the home straight and everything is starting to fall apart. Last episode was really interesting. We had the big showdown at the UN in which we had finally this breakthrough. Vassarala was able to pick up on the sensitivity that Draper had around Travis, get in there and needle it a bit and kind of force a mini confession, a moment of truth out of Draper, which everybody heard. And even though Draper retracted it later, it's, it's not going to be the end of that. Everyone in that room knows that there was some being on that planet that didn't have a vaccine on, which is fantastic. I'm finding my loyalty split all, all the time. Like I, I'm often getting people in the comments saying the belters are right or the earth is right or the Martians are the best or, or whatever it is. And I, I would always urge caution with, with those views because while I may have a natural sympathy because of my personal life experiences, my politics, my take on things, that's a subjective view. That's not an objective view. I'm not saying it's true. I'm saying it's true to me. It accords with my experiences. That's not the same as saying something is objectively true as a fact. Like Martians are the best. Earthers are the best. Belters are the best. Or, or the converse. That's, that's where everything starts getting dangerous. I'm really happy that we've made it to Ganymede. I really want the interview with Dr. Strickland to, to get going. I'm anxious to know where May is, how May is, if May is, and, you know, was May the proto-molecule that was running at people? Was Dr. Strickland the proto-molecule that was running at people? It, all sorts of possibilities are going, are going through my head, and as I often tell you, nine out of ten of them, too ridiculous even to mention, but it is interesting. And obviously we've also got the stuff going on with Dr. Aturbi um, at Venus on the Arbogast, which I finally remembered. That was so funny editing that. I'd... Anyway, it's going to be very difficult now for anyone to remain intransigent to the idea that this is a first contact moment for humankind. We've had the fact that Eros suddenly turned into a spaceship and flew away anyway. Now we have, you know, there being the life on Venus in the vicinity of the um, impact point where Eros landed on Venus. We've got Draper's words at the UN. There's just this stack of evidence that is starting to pile up, which is going to become impossible to ignore. And I'm very interested to see how different factions and figures in this respond. Because this sort of stuff does drive people a bit bonkers. And, I, and I'm all in for that. So I think that's enough as an introduction. I think this could be a really interesting episode. So let's have at it. Previously on The Expanse. That was fucking horrible what happened on the Sonambulist. But I don't necessarily think it would have been any better if our team hadn't intervened. I'm pretty sure they'd have just killed them and taken the stuff, to be honest. They didn't look like the most reliable of people. Been killed. Those mm. cops were gonna kill them both. It was the right move. And I keep telling myself that. If we do what we came here to do, I'll figure out a way to live with it. How many people have you killed? Well, I'm not a homicidal maniac. Old and Naomi, they're not like me. They're better. I'll watch your back, but they'll find your little girl. <sighs> it's a directory of the dead and missing. Let's see if they're on it. She's not 
not dead. And Strickland's not dead or missing, which is good. Where was he then? Where was Strickland when he took May? Ganymede, pediatric care, clinic seven. Let's see if anyone who worked there is still around. There's a few. They're all in Act Dome 9. This way. Oh, come on. Wow. What the fuck? Everything's dead. Ah. Oh. oh, God, that would hurt so much. Bless their bones trying to save everything. This is where I used to work. It was beautiful. I try using my imagination. It really was, though. Well, Sergeant Draper failed. And then she snapped because she couldn't deal with it. So you think she's lying? I think she's crazy. Wow! You're an idiot! She seemed perfectly sane to me. And after Eros, my definition of crazy has contracted significantly. <laughs> if she has zero credibility, there's no point talking to her again. Point is, something was bothering her and she was ordered to suppress it. Mars is using peace as a distraction. Peace as a distraction. God, I wish I could disagree with you right now. Our apologies if we kept you waiting. Not at all. How is Sergeant Draper? In her quarters, resting. And in no frame of mind to answer any more questions, I assume. I'm afraid not. The traumatized mind is a dark place. But rest assured, we're here and happy to help any way we can. We have Earth's best doctors at our disposal. Thank you. The medical team at our embassy is more than able. And if it's absolutely necessary, we can arrange for further testimony after the sergeant is fully recovered. Who was the officer who spirited Sergeant Draper away? A friend of Sergeant Draper's family here to offer moral support. He didn't seem like the supportive type. Madam, your ships are still heading towards ours at Ganymede. So unless your intention is to have us shooting at each other again, let's do what we came here to do. You really fucked up in there, Gunny. I know. But I know I saw something. Oh, yes. A man standing on the surface of Ganymede without a vac suit. It happened! But you believe what you saw is true because you need it to be true. To explain how your team was killed. So what happens now? Now you go home back to Mars. And then what? Then we do what's best for you and for the Corps. Okay. I'd like to see the ocean before I leave. Sorry, you're under restrictions now. What a prick. You mean I'm a prisoner? No. I mean you're a Martian. It takes weeks, sometimes months, to acclimate to these open spaces. You saw what happened when we stepped off the ship. You're breathing natural air. You're trying to orient yourself with that damned horizon. The transport is coming to get you. You'll be shipping out day after tomorrow. This is outrageous. This is actually making me a little bit Open the shades. wanna cry with rage. Bobby, you go get that fucking sea. <sighs> she was found in the wreckage of the egg dome. I'm not talking about soybeans, I mean exotic biologicals. Anything that shouldn't be on Ganymede. Well done, Erin Wright. Sir, I'm not sure what you're getting at. We did a pretty thorough analysis. I don't want pretty thorough. I want you to go over every goddamn molecule on that armor and tell me if there's anything you've missed. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Hmm. I'm liking Aaron Wright today. He's gonna let me down now, isn't he? Or die. I have no idea where Dr. Strickland is. Have you seen any patients with any kind of bluish modeling or unusual heavy skin growths? Growths might have been glowing. I haven't seen anything like that. What is it? Something we heard about. It's probably just a story. Then do me a favor and don't spread it around. People don't need anything more to worry about. The battle took out three of these domes, but we managed to save two. Wow. We've got things moving in the right direction now. We're going to rebuild this place. I love that spirit. <laughs> 
This doesn't feel like Eros, does it? Maybe it just hasn't started yet. This yellowing indicates a nitrogen imbalance. We have phage-resistant bacteria in the hydroponic lines to prevent that, which means that something got in and killed the good bacteria, which means the hydroponics have been contaminated. Bosh, I got it. Is that you? Perhaps? Yes, it's me. What the hell? Goddamn! Howard! Our children are out there somewhere. Scared and alone, and you just... And you just leave! You just... Oh. You Huge. done? For fuck's sake. We gotta go. You know where Strickland is? I don't know. Roma will know. Who's Roma? He finds people. You give him canned chicken, he gives you a video from the security monitor. You give him more chicken, he, he gives you more video. He said that he could find control. But I, I didn't have enough chicken. I'll talk to Roma for the both of us, I promise. For May and Katoa. This is horrible. That man is ruined. Oh dear. What's wrong with you? Yeah. Sit down. Is he gonna confess? Is this it? Are we gonna? Is this it? I'm. I think she did see something on Ganymede. Something we're not supposed to know about. I believe that Ganymede was a test of a new weapon that Jules Pierre Mao is developing for Mars. Based on technology he unleashed on Eros. I was aware of his weapons research. Because I was working with him. You've known for a while. Ever since you had Frank de Graff killed. I know it makes no difference, but I had no hand in that, Christian. But you covered it up. You protected Jules. You need to understand that this started out as a conversation about peace, about the discovery of this incredible proto-molecule on Phoebe. God. This was a way to guarantee the safety of the Earth. At a terrible price. You're the one who taught me that Earth must come first. And Eris, a hundred thousand souls. Did I teach you that? If I had known what was going to happen on Eros, I would have stopped the project and Jules Pierre Mao along with it. And you know that! Eros nearly destroyed this planet. You will have to answer for your part in that. I know. And I will. But what we need to do right now is keep the system from burning down. If Ganymede really was a test, then this is... It's just the beginning. Shit! No. Wow. Go, Draper, go! Oh my god, help me move a bit sick then. have been stripped bare. That nurse said that a dozen freighters packed with food left the station after the battle to honor contracts instead of feeding the people here. They've been eating the plants to survive. You Roma? Who Roma? There's some people in the station we need to find. Heard Roma's the man to talk to. Ah, in that case. Dracaris. This guy just wants to find his little girl. She's sick. She could die if he doesn't find her. This 
business. We got rations, protein bars, ammunition. We're happy to barter. What I want is chicken. No chicken, back of the line. No! no. Stop! Amos! 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 He can't find me if you bash his head in. What's wrong with you? Are you gonna help us? Absolutely. I find little girl. Pro bono. Holy shit! The change in Jim! He totally approved of that! Whoa! Pause. Just gave me a thought about one thing is the most disadvantaged earthers the way their lives look is way way closer to the lives being lived by belters than it is to wealthy earthers and that for me is why racism fucks everything up because it convinces people that they've got more in common with people of the same skin tone who are exploiting them than people with a different skin tone who are also being exploited by that same group of people and it stops them coming together to do something about it. Play. My source inside the Martian Embassy just informed me that there's a lot of activity around Sergeant Draper's quarters. She done a runner. Because she's no longer in them. That is very interesting. Get her! You have to find her as quickly as possible. I'm on it. The Martians will, of course, be trying to find her as well. But there is a severe disadvantage on the streets of our planet. Make sure they're stopped frequently by the local authorities and checked for proper identification. My pleasure. <laughs> oh, um... Are we information sharing with Aaron right now? I'll tell him later. Why haven't you turned him in? At this moment, he's more useful to me outside of a jail cell. You're the only person mm. that knows the truth about him. The only person anyone might actually believe, and that puts you in a precarious position. Something yeah. changed with Aaron, right? Maybe when he saw Eris hurtling towards Earth, with no way to stop it, that it was time to make amends. I wasn't trying to be <clears throat> funny. Well, I wasn't laughing. It's, it's just... Uh... I'd forgotten how it felt to be fighting for the good guys again. I like it. It's nice. Pause. Okay, so I really hope that's what's happening with Aaron Wright. That is my reading of what's happening with Aaron Wright. And I am hoping that that is what's happening. Because I'm going to be pissed if there's a betrayal. It will be great plot-wise. I won't like, be upset about the writing. I'll be amazing writing, but I'll be upset personally. Um, I love that Vassarala is playing games with, <laughs> with the Martians because in this particular interaction I'm pro Draper and I'm pro Vassarala. I want I want them to find her, take her to the sea, and then have a and have this conversation. I think that would be really cool. Play. Excuse me, could you please tell me how to get to the ocean? <gasps> Don't take it personally. The clinic stopped giving Peter his meds two months ago. Makes him forget his manners. <gasps> and his reality sometimes. But I can tell you how to get to the ocean. I don't have any script. Martian, aren't you? And if you're Martian, you'll have Osteoex. It'll save some of us from dying in the summer when we're forced to drink sewer water. Jesus, is that true? Would it matter if I said it was? Uh, so, oh, you're no. a doctor? I put myself on the vocational training list when I was 17 years old. I'm 52 now. I'm still waiting for my slot. Wow. 
I'm sorry. That's okay. Everything we've been told about Martians is probably garbage anyway. That you're all a bunch mm -hmm. of robots with no souls who just like to conquer shit. Oh, and I hear your music ain't nothing to write home about neither. Well, that part might be true, yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Bobby. Nico. Here's what you do. Feet planted in line with your shoulders, back straight, head down staring at your toes. Then, raise your chin, slowly, until your eyes are locked on the horizon. Okay. In a couple of weeks, your brain will forge the pathways, your inner ear will get the memo, and you'll be no different than an earther. Thank you. Now you. Properly got me. That was beautiful. And just like Draper realizing how profoundly wrong her view has been of the situation on Earth, there was just that was stunning. And how this show does that, it just introduce you to a character for like a minute or two. I'm going to remember Nico now. That poor guy, Mac, was it? I mean, this is happening in our world now, is that I, I consider healthcare a, bit, a human right. I think, I think there's something unethical about having the ability to treat someone's illness and refusing to unless they pay you. I, I just cannot get behind that at all. I live in a country with universal healthcare, so it's free at the point of use for us. And I, 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 just, I cannot get my head around the idea that anyone would support anything other than that. It just, I've heard all the arguments, but it's like, it's like, where's the humanity in that? Oh, and just like him being a doc, like he was being a doctor, he was being a physician in this absurd circumstance. I'm really connecting, like you could just feel this guy's empathy and humanity just like oozing out of every single pore of him. So that's why I'm crying. It wasn't that something sad happened, although it was sad that this person is forced into destitution and having to do these things. But there was something incredibly validating and beautiful about that that moment with with him and Draper that is almost beyond words. It's it's like a feeling to feeling thing rather than a this thing happened and I felt like that. Oh, this episode is brilliant. Play. I would have stopped him before it went too far. Every shitty thing we do makes the next one that much easier. Doesn't it? Yeah. You said you weren't a homicidal maniac. I didn't kill him. And where I come from, bullies take desperate young girls like your daughter and force them into prostitution. And when they finally get knocked up, they peddle them to Johns who get off on that. After they have the kid, they push them right back out on the streets even before they have a chance to heal. And those kids, they use them too. Yeah. Some people deserve to be punished. I'm a famous. They're using distilled water in the hydroponic supply instead of the proper mineral solution needed for long-term stability. I see blue. Is it the protein molecule? 
That sounds bad. I'll only be able to get away with it for another week, maybe two, and after that, they won't be able to stop the cascade. What's the cascade? Oh, shit. In real nature, there's enough diversity to cushion an ecosystem. Now, in an artificial ecosystem, when one thing goes wrong, there's only a certain amount of pathways that can compensate for it. Eventually, those pathways get overstressed, and then they fail, which leaves fewer pathways. So it's not the thing that breaks you that you need to watch out for. Exactly. No! But wait! Yeah, but Ganymede is the most important food station out here. They're not gonna let it just collapse. No, they're not! That's why they... Pulls! That's why they're using the protein molecule! Because if you could stop the cascade... I've been focused on the human implications of it. There's no reason you couldn't use it to accelerate the development of plants. Is there? So could it be that what they want to do on Ganymede, the purpose of the protein molecule is to halt the breakdown process, or at least accelerate the recovery process after a breakdown to prevent you getting a cascade? Because it's the, what do they call it, the breadbasket of the solar system? Wow, okay. Play. The station's dead already. They just don't know it yet. I don't think it's gonna be dead. I'm so lonesome, I could cry. Mm -hmm. I'm too blue to fly. I'm so lonesome, huh? I could cry. I've never seen a night so long When time goes crawling by The moon just went behind the clouds To hide his face My health fly zone is now in effect around Ganymede Station until further notice oh, crap. Any unauthorized okay. ships entering oh, or leaving the zone will be fired upon I find the little girl on the main. They be moving way away from the battle and where the mirrors fall. That's all this part of the station. No camera after that. Mm. Whoa. Fair play, Creeper. She's like, if my career's over anyway, I'm seeing the fucking ocean. You take it for granted. You're right about that. Your people are on their way, so we have to be quick. Uh, quick about what? We never finished our conversation. The thing you saw on Ganymede, it was real. This is what attacked you and your team, isn't it? A new type of weapon. Project Caliban. It was being tested on Ganymede. Tested? By your own government. Fuck you, man. Sergeant, <laughs> I wish to God it was my government. Then I would have mm. some control over the situation. So you're telling me that me and my team, we were sacrificial lambs? And your friend, Travis. I don't believe it. And I don't believe a goddamn thing you were told to say in that room. This has to be a mind game. You are the enemy. We cannot afford to be enemies anymore. We need to go now. Yeah, I thought so. Wow. 
Wow! That was so good! I don't even think I have that much to say. <laughs> Because I did a couple of pauses and they were about the things that I would have spoken about anyway. But I am just really, oh my god, that was such a great episode. I'm loving that Avasarella was able to actually validate Draper's experiences. They're so important because she is. Anne showed her so that she could see it with her own eyes. And I think that will help in the coming episodes where she's going to have her rea her sense of reality tested repeatedly. The people that she trusts most are going to be attempting to undermine her sense of reality. And the people that she least trusts are the ones who will be able to corroborate and validate her experiences. That's going to be a real challenge for Draper because she is a full card carrying convert to her service and her role in the world as a Martian. So I think a little bit like Jim it has a has a version of this idealism that he is having to balance against reality. And now Draper is in a very similar position. Her idealism looks different. It's a Martian idealism about the, you know, the moral rectitude and singular purpose of her people and how, you know, it's all about being together and this one mission. And she's realising that that's probably not true. There are still politics. There are still egos. There are still all of the negative attributes of humanity are present in Martians as are present in Earthers. And how and who is she gonna be in, in the face of those things? And how can she develop her own morality independent from the one that she's been taught, which is the good Martian morality? I think that is a hell of a thing to wrestle with and I love that we are seeing Several characters from several different factions have to go through that process. And I think what that tells us is this is a human process. It isn't the preserve of one group of people or another group of people or a righteous cause or an unrighteous cause. It's like that's human existence is finding your way in a complicated world where sometimes this group of people is right other times this group of people are right in two different contexts the same action could be right in one context and wrong in another context it's just a constant process of evolution and adjustment to stay on top of your own morality and i love that this show is having characters wrestling with that across the board there's not just good guys and bad guys and everyone is doubtful everyone has doubt fantastic i i the way that Aaron wright came around this episode was brilliant they wrote that so well because first of all we had him really effective in the un and really pushing behind the scenes for that um, for Draper's suit to be properly analysed because he won he was now realising oh shit this is this is the fucking proto molecule isn't it you could see his cogs whirring and going into place and you saw that a bit in the last episode as well but it was more visible in this episode and then the way that he walked into that office I didn't actually say anything but the his body language. I mean, Sean Doyle played the shit out of that scene because his body language from the moment you saw him enter that room, I don't think anyone was in any doubt about what was going to happen. It, 
I really was convinced from his entry that this is it. This is the t this is the conversation that they've been waiting to have. And now Avasarala is in a very ropey situation because I think she believes Erin Wright that he entered into this for, if not so far as good reasons, it perhaps wasn't as nefarious as we might have thought. And then over time, he's he slipped and he slipped further and he slipped further to the point where he was covering up the murder of Frank de Graff, which I'm still pissed about. Anna Vassarada Wright is. Is he redeemable? I'd like to think so. He didn't kill de Graff, as far as his account goes. We could find out different, but assuming, taking his case at face value, I th would like to think I'd make the same decision of, as a Vassarala to take the utilitarian approach, try and keep my own kind of emotional reactions out of it as far as possible and just stay mission focused for the time being, but make it absolutely clear that there will be an accountability moment. This just isn't that moment. I'm uneasy that no one else knows about this. But then who would we trust? I'm not entirely sure she could tell the Secretary General without him feeling compelled to act. And I have not seen another person in this command and control structure that I would feel comfortable sharing this information with. She can't tell any of those, that freaking general guy, the, the leader of the armed forces now. He's, I mean, he's just stupid. He's uh, how he's in that position has to be nepotism because he's an idiot. Same for the science guy who was with the turbine. It's like, how are these people in these roles? It's got to be privilege because it's certainly not talent. <laughs> So that's going to be an interesting one to, to watch unfold. I, if I had had the information that Avasarala has at this point, I believe I would have made the same decisions. So it awaits to be seen if there are things that she's not privy to, which would mean those decisions are wrong. And I'm excited to, to, to watch, just watch that play out. I'm really pissed at Mars for the way they treated Gunny, even though it's obvious that that would be what they would do. I don't think Earth would have behaved any differently. I don't think about a community would have behaved any differently. They needed her to keep to the party line and she didn't. And that's going to cause them problems. So I totally understand it from, you know, an organisational point of view. But I'm still fucking appalled at it from a moral point of view. I love that she escaped. And I mean, that escape, however long it lasted, maybe sounds like a couple of hours. She learned probably more in that little bit of time than she's probably learned in years. And what's happened to her now is that she has seen for herself Earthers and Earth itself are not exactly as she has been led to believe. Which I think is going to serve her very well in the coming episodes because, as I said earlier, she's got to start being able to distinguish the Martian line from reality. And she's not needed to do that before because she's not been in a situation where that was relevant. It, it just... You know, she's a soldier, she's mission focused, she's doing these things. And there was no moral conflict about it. But now she's in a situation where there is a moral conflict. So, and she has to consider her actions, not just in how they benefit Mars, but in how they benefit the world. And that's fascinating. Um, love, Nico, Earth, just, that was amazing. Uh, meanwhile, on Ganymede, we have this situation where they're trying to find May. They need to deal with Roma, the um, 
interesting chap and Amos batters him half to death of course but not to fully death which was a point that Amos wanted to make clear that's not the actions of a homicidal maniac but you do just get the idea of like this absolute stench of decay on Ganymede you know was it massively different to the earth market ultimately people with far too few resources squabbling over them because survival and so people are sort of you know dragged into the most base version of themselves not because that's necessarily who they want to be or who they would be in a different context but because survival is a primary drive and in when it gets down to brass tacks at the level we're looking at on Ganymede and sections of Earth, they will die if they don't develop the ability to fight for those resources effectively. So I think it's quite frustrating when people who haven't been in that circumstance apply their version of morality to a totally different situation in which your version of morality is bullshit in this, in this place. Anyway, that's a tangent, but we got to see Ganymede, we got to see there's this issue with the hydroponics where they're saying basically this, this, this breakdown has happened and, and in a big ecosystem where you have lots of diversity, you can have, you know, an extinction level event of an animal, of a particular strain of a plant or whatever, and there are so many variables that can move in to fill the gaps that you don't have a total catastrophic environment meltdown of the entire environment you can have some localized even really serious disruption but the ecosystem as a whole survives and it just adapts and goes off in a different direction but what prax was saying was with such a, an undiverse ecosystem in this environment if something goes wrong here it can domino effect and then everything dies and Ganymede is a crucial supply line to the belt so what are they going to do and that led me to think that perhaps there is another there's a repurposing of the protein molecule that could have been made what if rather than just people or people at all that the focus of the testing on Ganymede was in the plants so i like that as an option i'm not saying that's what's gonna happen but it seems to me a plausible a plausible thing to you to use the protein molecule for whether that's in the plot or not and it did look i mean it that might just be a miss a misdirect but those little things there it was blue liquid running through it i was thinking oh, that would be amazing if it if that's what's happening if they've actually repurposed it to you know there's all manner of ways that could help you could prevent the cascade you could potentially speed up the growth process because of the way that it creates this sort of evolutionary acceleration could you even create new kinds of food new kinds of plants new medicines But then, like, on the negative side, I'm away with the fairies now. I'm like, can you remember the programme Jace and the World Warriors? Thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Jace searches for his father to unite the magic root and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Sawboss. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. What if the plants now started developing and fucking coming to life in their own version of sentience because of the... Oh my god, I'm, I'm off. I'm off. I'm like fucking two seasons down the line now. <sighs> That's what I liked about this episode. It seemed, for me, this episode opened a lot of doors. And it waits to be seen which of those the show is going to choose to go down. But this was a really, really good episode for me. Oh, I didn't need any dramatic action. This was a lot of introducing us to new characters, introducing characters to new information, 
introducing us to to new sections of society and and elements of this story and i loved it so this this is one of my favorite episodes of the season i'm not even joking <laughs> until the next time bye bye thank you for being a friend